Hello, my name is Sara Diaz. In this presentation, me and my colleagues want to talk about a little known phase in the production of prehistoric pottery, the surface treatment, through an experimental approach. For this study, an experimental program has ca been carried out where the main variable being explored was the category of tool involved in the creation of handmade pottery. We will present a methodological and analytical proposal and a practical example. Throughout this presentation, we have set a section devoted to a review of the concept, focusing on the relationship between archaeology, experimentation and prehistoric pottery. In the second section, we will explain the design of the specific experimental program on surface treatment. Also, we explain the methodology implemented and the categories of analysis derived from it. In the last section, we will present a part of the experimental program, the case of the pivot and the traces that it generates. <clears throat> we will relate this result to the archaeological material. Analogy plays an important role throughout the development of archaeological science. It helps to reconstruct the bridge between a past human activity and the material record that exists in our present. It allowed the archaeologists to recognize in an inner trace the living process that generated. In this sense, some of the methodological developments in archaeology have been based on the construction of models that allow us to establish this association between action and matter, between gesture and trace. Within this circular logic, experimental archaeology is important because it allows the construction of explanatory models about past phenomena. The archaeological materials is found in a static way and the aim of the study is to analyze the dynamic process hidden in the archaeological remains by means of experimental models. In this way, we will be able to provide knowledge about the production processes of handmade ceramic. This knowledge, interrelated with other disciplines and studies, will bring us to an understanding of the material conditions of the past. To sum up, we assume that through the development of an experimental program, we could understand production process and the work invest in archaeological objects. We can design and execute an experimental program with current materials, focusing on the final stages of pottery production. So, what do you want to achieve at the end of this research? In the broader sense, generating knowledge about economic, material and social dynamics of the human groups in the past, specifically recreating surface treatment combining many variables. In the second section, we will explain in detail the design and creation of the experimental program, as well as the methodology for data collection and sample analysis. But before explaining the methodology, let us define the subject of the study. Surface treatment refers to the series of action in the production of ceramic vessels in which the internal and external walls are smooth and prepared for a functional or aesthetic purpose. Surface treatment can be separated from or connected with the procedure to create the shape of the recipient, depending on whether it's carried out during or after, after modeling the shape, or even after firing. This aspect of handmade pottery manufacture has not been studied in any depth in archaeological pottery studies, which have tended to focus on other uh, stages of pottery production, such as the procurement and preparation of the clay, the techniques used to make the recipient, decoration and firing processes. Consequently, precise proposals have been rarely been made about the activity of surface treatment, which has become diluted as another aspect in the creation of the pot. 
In order to understand the effect of tools on the pottery surface, the environmental um, variables, the weather, that mainly affect the characteristic of the clay have remained constant. Within the second group of variables, the following have been considered. Type of clay, drying time, working time, and toolkit. In the following, we will explain the variables in detail. We have used two types of clay, a natural clay, but prepared and packaged by professional. This clay has a very fine temper and the traces in the samples are well defined. Another natural clay is in raw state. We have cleaned it, filtered it and hydrated it. This last clay is rich in temper. The traces are not as well defined as in the previous case, but the result in the samples is more like the archaeologic remains. We, we will be able to compare the difference between the result of both clays. Regarding the drying times, we have selected wet, wet green leather, dry leather and dry consistency. The time it takes for the clay to dry depends of its own characteristic and the weather. We have considered low, medium and high working time. We use an electric kind. The firing temperature is similar to the temperature of a prehistoric ceramic firing structure. We have selected 11 types of tools grouped into three groups. Tools of mineral origin, such as pebble, flint spatula, and pottery spatula. Processed spatulas of vegetal and animal origin, such as metapod, horn, shell, and wooden spatula. And finally, fibrous and tissue of animal and plant origin, such as grass, linen rag, leather, and wool. In terms of preparation, the aim is to create experimental samples. Samples are square and flat. In the future, it will be interesting to experiment with other types of morphologies. During the process, we check the temperature and humidity conditions to ensure that it's worked at the precise drying time. The result is a reference collection of more than 2,050 samples. The samples are photographed with a binocular loop and analyzed macroscopically. We can identify traces according to their nature. For example, groups, flood lines, striation, polished areas. We also give importance to the appearance of surface matte, satin, shiny. In the final section, we are going to present an example of the pebble tool and the trace it show on a pottery surface. We have selected pebble with a rounded shape and very polished. It has been selected for a river bed. Pebble tool leaves grooves on the pottery surface. With a low labor investment, the groups are recognizable during all drying times. As the clay becomes drier, the shines become more pronounced and defined. All four results are defined as a smooth surface. With a medium labor investment, the groups are pronounced during wet and green leather consistency. However, when the clay is dry, the traces each is flat with a homogeneous shine over the surface. The surface treatment obtained in the wet and green leather phases is the smooth uh, surface, but in dry leather and dry consistency, it's considered as polished surface. With a high labor investment, deep groups are shown in the soft stages. But when the clay is drier, the groups are softened and the surface appearance is shiny. In short, 
the dry clay and the high labor investment results in a burnished surface. Now let's analyze in depth the case of dry drying times. In this slide, uh, we can observe the development of traces with low, medium and high working time. It's obvious that uh, the drier the clay is and the longer it's worked, the more likely it's that the traces will soften or disappear. The focus now is on the shine, which is spread and the traces become less visible. We have compared the experimental program with a Neolithic site located in the Pyrenees, Corotracito. Comparison between the experimental program and the archaeological records allow a first approximation to identify Potter's tool, drying time and working time. In this case, the archaeological material has been worked with a pebble, while the clay was in the wet or green letter consistency. In addition, a low labor investment of a few minutes can be identified. The groups are deep, and we can see the typical striation of granite pebbles inside them. This archaeological fragment, on the other hand, show a high labor investment in time. The trace have, has disappeared uh, due to the back and forth movement and the burnishing is regular and homogeneous. The potential of the proposed methodology for sociological and textural analysis of surface treatment in pottery is highlighted. Hence, the possibility of discriminating and different surface treatment techniques open new perspective for the study of prehistoric pottery. Thank you for your attention.